So you guys know I'm from Boulder, right? Everybody knows I'm from Boulder. So Santa Cruz is like a little Boulder. It's kind of like Boulder in a lot of ways. So uh, I was wondering, why is everybody, I get a good response in Santa Cruz. You know, you guys, I don't really have a lot of fans. You're all the fans, pretty much. It's all Santa Cruz, most of the people. And there's now in Austin, Texas, actually. So what's Austin, Texas, and what's Boulder? And what's Santa Cruz? I'm thinking, why is it? What is it about Santa Cruz? You guys are like old hippies. All of you guys. And I don't mean, I don't even mean it in a way, I don't mean it in a hippie kind of way that we're all think of hippies. I mean it in the way like, check this out, because it's very important. It's why you're here, and it's why we all connect. To be a hippie doesn't mean that you're dirty and smelly and steal stuff. It, it doesn't mean that you smoke pot and do acid and love the dead. I mean, those are all things hippies may do, but that's not what it means to be a hippie. What it means to be a hippie, what it means to be a hippie and why it's so, strong, uh, so scary to the mainstream is because to be a hippie is to not buy the bullshit. Yes. That's what it means. That's what, that's what we all have in common here, people. That's what all of you, you may not know each other, but you're not buying the bullshit. And I'm sitting here as somebody who's educated in the bullshit. And I'm telling you, it's bullshit. And while the doctor may be nice and kindly, the medical model is not your friend. It's killing you. It's awful. It is in sneaky, insidious, nefarious, uh, uh, intentional perhaps even. It's so awful. Do you know, not only is cholesterol not bad for you, you should be eating it. Lots of it, excuse me. I'm getting all excited here. <laughs> You should be eating, there's no top end on how much you should eat. The cholesterol containing foods are the most powerful, check this out, building foods. They're anabolic, and as we'll see here in a minute when I stop my introductory rant here, there's a war on our building. There's a war on growth and repair. There's a war on healing. I saw a girl in a wheelchair here and I felt like, where's Lisa, or Lynn? Lisa, right? And I looked at her and I said, you want to be in a wheelchair? She said, no. You don't have to be. I want to get you out of that. I'm not a heel. I'm not like one of these, you know. But I know how the body works. And guess what? I'm not that smart. I'm not. I just am a data junkie. And these days, if you're a data junkie, you can seem like you're pretty smart. Because data is so available. And information is so available. And not only am I a data junkie where I just love research, I get to work clinically. So I get to see what happens. I see patients. To work clinically means you see patients. So I'm, only, I'm not only doing the research, I'm not only getting the raw data, but I'm also seeing how it works clinically. And let me tell you something, nobody has to be in a wheelchair unless something's broken. The body's a healing system. It's hidden in plain sight. Anybody ever hear that term or that phrase? Hidden in plain sight. It's hidden in plain sight because every time you cut yourself, what happens? Right in front of your eyes. Guess what you think, it's just your finger? You think that's just your skin? It's every part of the body. It's in the nature of the body. And I say this all the time, and I know probably some of you are sick of hearing it, but there's some people who will say, who will listen, and then still go to the doctor at the end, and the doctor cannot help you. I don't know how to say it. I'm not mad at doctors. I like them. They're nice people, but the medical model cannot help you because you're breaking down at a level that they don't have access to. Only God has access to that level. Only the spiritual force, which is yours. That's the only thing that has access to that level where healing takes place. Do you understand this? That's why all a doctor can do is cut. And that's why all they, and I don't mean a doctor. I don't want to say, I don't want to beat up on doctors. Don't want to beat up on doctors. They're too easy. That's the low hanging fruit. <laughs> Any doctors here? They make it easy. They make it easy. They do make it easy. They make it easy to pick on them because the dumb things they say, oh my God, the dumb things they say. The dumb, dumb, dumb things they say. But it's the medical model. It's the medical model is helpless at the level where healing and growth and regeneration take place. Thank you, MZ, so much. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you, Al and Son. Thank you. I mean, I always forget to do this. I always end and I forget to thank. So I'm going to thank everybody right now. Thank you, where's Dr. Wallach? Thank you, wherever Dr. Wallach is. Thank you so much. That man is a genius. Okay, genius, genius, prescient, uh, a, a, a polymath. I don't know if he's here. Is he just talking about here? He's a polymath. You know what a polymath is? He's a, somebody who brings a genius in many levels and brings them all together into one picture. And if you read his books, 
By the way, if you like to read, and I, I'm a book junkie, I'm a, a bibliophile from the word go, his books are amazing and they're easy to understand and they're accessible to anybody and you will become much, much, much smarter and much better able to handle yours and your family, family's health if you read his books. And they're easy reading. They're easy reading. So anyway, so thank you everybody from the bottom of my heart and thank you all for being here. I love all of you and I appreciate all of you very much and I can't tell you how much I appreciate the support. Thank you so much because this is a mission, people. This is a mission. And if you got the letters I got, you'd be on fire too. You'd be on fire too over the, last, over the course of the last almost 17, 18 years that I've been doing this. Okay, so went to pharmacy school. Uh, I, I remember the, when you go to school, when you go to the... Uh, enter into the uh, first class, they want to do an interview with you. They want to see who's coming into the school. And I had long hair and I was kind of on the edge because I'm a hippie back, you know, I was skeptical too. I'm like you guys. And I said, I want to study food as medicine. And he thought that was the funniest thing he'd ever heard. <laughs> he said, we don't do any of that. And he laughed. I'll never forget it. And I ended up continuing. I, I was very disappointed, but I was already there and I committed. So I went to pharmacy school. What we learn in pharmacy school is how to use poison. That's what it is. Pharmacos means poison. Right from the get-go, you can see a problem here. We learn to use poison, how to work with the body as poison. But we also study the medicinal impact of substances on the body. Not just medicines, but the medicinal impact of other things, including vitamins and minerals. And so while I'm studying toxicity, and I'm studying prescription medicine, and I'm studying this model of using poison to heal the body, I'm also studying nutrition. And I'm studying diseases as if they were nutritional deficiencies at their core. And they're telling us all the nutritional deficiencies that are at the core of all the diseases that we suffer from. And I wasn't the smartest guy in the world. I'm thinking, well, gosh, if these are poisons and we're learning how to control them to somehow get them to do their work without killing people, and these are nutrients which are the true core of the deficiency of the disease process, why the heck aren't we using nutrients? And I graduated pharmacy school with this thing in my head about what was just was a little distress at what was going on here. And I got out into the world of pharmacy and I'm dispensing medicines. And I'm dispensing medicines that I know from pharmacy school I didn't even want to touch or smell. And I'm giving them to your grandmother and my grandmother. And not only that, but she's got 12 bottles or 15 bottles and she's putting them on the counter. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? And then I start to notice that the people who are getting all the medicine are the old people and the little kids. The most vulnerable people in our culture are getting the medicines. And then I'm noticing Nobody's getting better. They're staying on the medicine and it's hidden in plain sight. It's like you're not getting better. What is the point of the medicine? So little by little, I started to sneak in nutrition into the pharmacy. And this was 1986, 1987. And this is kind of radical in 1986, 1987. And so Mrs. Jones would come in for a blood pressure medicine. I'd give her some magnesium. You know, I, I, or, or somebody would come in for their antibiotic. I said, here's some probiotics. Make sure you take them afterwards. I start doing little things like that. And little by little, just from the nutrients that I was using, just from the essential, I would do essential fatty acid magnesium for blood pressure. That was a big one. I do B5 for acne. That's another one. And uh, I noticed that they're really improving in a way that their medicine wasn't touching. So I, like I said, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I got the message. I got the message. And then one day, I'm sitting in a... Uh, I'm sitting in my office. Uh, I, I, I did some skincare. Some of you may know I'm also in the skincare. So I had a skincare lab, and I'm sitting in my skincare lab and uh, tinkering around some stuff. And there's a knock on the door, and it's the mailman. I get the mail, and there's a tape in the mail. Never forget this day. Tape in the mail. Dead doctors don't lie. <laughs> and I stick it in, and this is like 1992. I'm like, oh my God, who is this guy? He's saying everything I knew from pharmacy school and more. He's saying things only pharmacists know about how about liquids and about colloidal minerals and about, gluco, uh, about uh, glucosamine, things nobody said before. And so uh, I just listened to the tape over and over again, and I started doing talks. And uh, one day I'm at the gym working out, and I can talk to a guy. That doctor's online. Oh, I know that guy. Yeah, he's a friend of my friends. And I thought, what? You know Dr. Wallach? He said, yeah. I said, oh, so tell him I want to meet him. Anything. He said, oh, no problem. This is 96, 97. 
Dr. Wallach comes to my lab, we have a nice talk, blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, I'm doing his radio show, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, and the rest is history. And that's how I got involved with all this stuff. And what happened, what I've seen since 1996, I think I met Dr. Wallach in 97. Since 1997, when I started seeing this, I have seen the most incredible, phenomenal things happen to the body. First it was with just the colloidal minerals, and then it was with just the glucosamine, and now it's with the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Folks, I cannot tell you how many letters I've seen in the last 15 years, five or 10 a week in the last two years that I've been doing the radio show, from people losing weight, from people making changes. When I say to uh, Lisa that she's gonna get out of that chair, I'm saying it because I've seen it. When I say to somebody uh, that your diabetes is going to drop, you can drop your insulin wherever that gal is, you're going to drop your insulin, I say because I've seen it so many times. You think I'm passionate, you'd be passionate too if you see, saw this stuff happen as often as I have. But what we have to understand is this. We have to be hippies. We have to be skeptical about what we hear. Even from me, you have to be skeptical. Why do you think I give you the science? I, sometimes people say I go into too much detail, right? You're, have you heard? You know, I sometimes bring that up on the air. I, people think I go into too much detail. I want you to have detail because I want you to make the decision. I want to give you the detail so you make the decision. I don't want to tell you what to do. I hate when, when I have to tell people to take this supplement or that supplement. I want you to figure it out. I'll tell you the logic, the troubleshooting. It's troubleshooting is what it is. Troubleshooting, problem solving, backtracking. That's all. That's what your doctor should be doing. Your doctor should be backtracking, but that's not what doctoring is. What does the word doctor mean? You go to the IRS and you say, I doctored these, Mr. IRS man. What would he say? You know, these are doctored, <laughs> right? That's good, <laughs> right? And oh, I'm a doctor. Like, you're proud of that? You doctor? You, you commit fraud? That's what doctoring is. It's to commit a fraud. What you should be doing is you should be backtracking, not hacking into the body to pretend that the, the digestive system works because the gallbladder's gone. That's smart. Of course you don't have any more gallbladder pain. You don't have a gallbladder. Uh, that's smart, you know? Oh, I got a headache. Don't touch my head. Don't, <laughs> go touch my head, okay? That's the same logic. Cancer, chemotherapy. Curing cancer, right? You are cancer. They're your cells. Well, of course, your chemotherapy is killing yourself. It's not what you do to take care of cancer. We're going to kill cancer. That's killing yourself. That's curing cancer. Now, I say this to you, and some of you may hear this, and you say, well, why, why, I didn't think, why didn't I think of it? And that's the bottom line here. That's what I want to start off by talking about. We don't understand our bodies. And why? Well, it's one thing to not understand your car. I don't understand my car. I don't know what the heck's going on. <laughs> Something's going on in my, wrong in my engine. I don't know what the heck's going on. And that guy, I'm not a genius. That guy who fixes my car, that guy's a genius. My computer, the same way. The kid. 17 years old, he takes the thing out. What the hell is going on in there? Those wires and those, those circuits and everything. How am I going to make any? He just knows, pulls one out, puts the other one in. And that's a genius. What I'm talking about is how to understand something that is the most relevant and intimate and should be the easiest thing there is to understand, and that's our bodies. But how many of us in this room know what our gallbladder does? Pancreas. Where vitamin C is absorbed. Liver. What a liver cell is. Anything. How many of us, yet we, is there any more intimate or important? Is there, help me, is there? Is there anything more? No, no money, no job, no spouse, no girlfriend, nothing. If you are not healthy, nothing. There's not a, a billion dollars and dying of cancer or broke and healthy. What would you rather be? Please, please, <laughs> please. It's not even an argument, right? So if we're focusing on money, if we're focusing on, on spouses and on relationships and all these other things, and nothing is more important than our bodies, we're missing something here. And so we have to understand the basics. And so what I'm going to do, to you, uh, what I'm going to do for you guys here today is I'm going to tell you some of the basics. And I, there's so much to talk about. There's so, 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 so much to talk about that it's going to be the scratching of the surface. But my number one goal here is to get you fired up so that you want to start to work on your bodies yourself. And number two, it's to get you fired up so you want to start to participate in using a good nutritional supplement program. And how many of you guys are using the Longevity products right now? Okay. Now, I know there's all this stuff about to be skeptical about multi-level and this and that, blah, blah, blah. There is no, first of all, there's no better, more egalitarian, democratic, fraternal business than you can be in than multi-level. 
hidden in plain sight. It's obvious. It's obvious. So if you're interested in being in a business where you're with your friends and you're with your peers and you're with people who are like you, you need to be in a multi-level uh, multi company. Now, if you have even a tiny little bit of understanding about nutrition, about the power of nutrition, then you want to be participating in a nutritional supplement program. If you don't have, if you don't have the desire or the drive to be in a nutritional supplement program, you are not participating in the data that's available to you. Do you understand this? There is so much literature to support the use of nutritional supplements to reverse reverse degenerative disease to create the terrain where de de degenerative breakdown disease does not occur, that if you are not aware of it, you are either under a rock and completely oblivious, or you just don't care. But if you do care and you are participating, you're going to be in a nutritional supplement program. So you got a multi-level model that allows you to be with your peers and with your colleagues and with your friends and with your loved ones and make friends and hang out with people like you, and you know you're going to nutritionally supplement, you're crazy not to participate in this business, okay? You're crazy, once you have those two, and some people ask me, oh, how do I get people to talk? I don't try to convince anybody anything. I just say, hey, listen, if you know about supplementation, and most people do, and if you don't, then that's fine, then, you know, God loves you anyway, as I say. God loves you too, that's fine, okay? But if you know about nutritional supplementation on the one hand, and you know and you understand the power and this, this intimate relationship forming business that is multi-level by nature. How many of you guys are in multi-level of some kind? Multi-level is where the guy on top of you benefits when you benefit and the guy below you benefits when you benefit. So everybody's networked. They're all connecting each other up. That's what, that's what the model is basically. So it's called, a, it's called a network. They used to call it a pyramid. It's not a pyramid, although it is shaped that way, but pyramid doesn't have a product. Multi-level is when the guy above you benefits from you. That's cool. That's cool right there. Does your boss benefit from you? Does your boss benefit from you? You better believe he benefits from you. But are you getting, be are you getting benefit from him is the question. When you do well for your business, when you do great for your car company or your computer company or wherever, does that show up for you? No, multi-level, you get cash for that. Same with below you. It's, there's a connection to ev everybody's connected in this kind of networking way. And so it's a beautiful, beautiful model and it's a fair model. And that's why in longevity, why I like longevity, is there's people who are average regular people. Regular people. And regular people making 10 or 15 grand a month. Regular people. Nothing special, they're just nice, good people. So that's what I want to say about multi-level, and that's what I want to say about participating in the nutritional supplement program. But before, the reason I really want to talk, what I really want to talk about, I want to be clear though about the multi-level deal. Multi-level is awesome. Keep your ears open and keep your, uh, keep your mind open. What we need to understand if we're going to take care of the body is the body doesn't break down in different ways. This is the most important thing that you can understand about how your body, is, how your body degenerates, really. And that's what we're talking about here is degenerative disease. Degenerative disease is diseases of breakdown. Okay? Diseases where the body decays, where it breaks down, where it degenerates. But the body's a regenerating system, so right away we know we have a problem. The body does not degenerate specifically, it degenerates generically. It, gener it degenerates and break down, breaks down the same way whether you have MS or whether you have acne or whether you have psoriasis or whether you have hyperpigmentation or whether you have anything. It breaks down the same way. And while we think our flavor of disease, we, people get attached to their diseases, I've noticed. Some people are very attached to their age. I have this, and I have, I have amyotropic lateral sclerosis, and I have superintiva, hyper, superintiva dental hyperhidrosis, or whatever that is. You know? I love the names they give people. I love the names. By the way, your diagnosis is not a disease. It's a label. It's a description. It means nothing except for a guy can go into a book and look it up and see how to treat you with it. That's all it means. The body breaks down generically, but yet if you go to the World Health Organization statistics, they'll tell you there's 12,000 different diseases. There is not 12,000 different diseases. There's basically one. You're breaking down. That's the disease. And it doesn't matter if it's in your thyroid, and it doesn't matter if it's in your heart, and it doesn't matter if it's in your head or your nerves or your bowels. Or, it matters that it's breaking down. And this is this idea that we have to go over here and over here and over here and you're like a little boy with his finger in the dike and you're putting a hole here and here and here and here and you're trying to plug up all these holes. It's just a way of obfuscating, of disempowering us. Disempowering us, of taking the power away from us and putting it into an authority 
that's external from you. You do not need an authority that's external for you once you understand how the body breaks down. Okay, now how does the body break down? Well, if we're going to understand how the body breaks down, we have to understand the body, right? Make sense? Well, just like, just like the body, uh, the disease state is not complicated, in a way the body's not complicated. There's only really two parts to your body. How do you like that? Only two parts to your body. Anybody ever hear me talk about raisin bread? Okay, what's raisin bread? Your body's like raisin bread. That's all it is, raisin bread. What are the two parts of your body? Or the two parts of raisin bread? What is it? Raisin and bread. Okay, yes, raisin and bread, obviously, raisin bread. Well, your body is raisin bread. Of course, in the world of science, we, we have fancy ways of saying it. We call it parenchyma and mesenchyma. Anybody hear those terms? <laughs> parenchyma and mesenchyma. Okay, that's what it is. It's just, but I call it raisins and bread. You may know it better as cells and extracellular matrix. That's all the body is. It's cells that are embedded in a, in a matrix in a, a matter of some kind. Matrix and matter come from the same term. So you have cells, like raisin bread. You have cells, and then you have stuff in between them. That's it. Why is this important? Because this is where the disease process begins, which should be obvious because this is what the body is. To understand the disease process, to understand the breakdown process, you have to understand the bread, and you have to understand the raisins. And that's all you have to understand. Okay, so we're good. It doesn't matter if it's a thyroid cell or, or a toenail cell. It doesn't matter if it's a toenail cell or it's a heart cell. It's a cell and it's in a matrix. That's it, people. It's a cell and it's in a matrix. That's all you need to know. So now what do I mean by this, okay? Well, let's talk about a cell first. Okay, you know, you, I, I, I like listening to conspiracy theorists and I like the drama of the day and government this and doctor that and you know, I get involved with it. It's kind of titillating, I admit. I used to watch news, I don't watch that anymore, but I, I follow the, the mainstream culture, but when I do, I sometimes think to myself, if people knew what a cell was, that's all we would be talking about. We would never talk about anything but cells, because when we understand the amazingness that makes us up, people, listen to me, you're a hundred trillion cells. You are made up of a hundred trillion cells, and if I take a little piece out, I will, and I put it under a microscope, it would be like an animal. It would walk to food. It would run away from poisons. It would reproduce. It would have, has a little skeletal system. And she has 100 trillion of them. We have 100 trillion. They make us up. Please, come on. You got to say that's cool. Come, it's not just me, right? That's amazing. That's amazing. But you know what? It gets even more amazing. It gets even more amazing. Because then we got to see what a cell is. What is a cell? All right now, 100 trillion. OK, I admit it. 100 trillion, that's kind of like 200 trillion, 100 trillion, what's, what's 100 trillion between friends? You know, that's like a number that we can't even grasp, so it's just so big. First of all, how long do you think it would take you to count your cells one by one, if you counted one by each second? Any guesses? 2,000 years, guess again. Any guesses? How long it take you to count a cell? Uh, how many years? 100 trillion seconds. seconds. That's good. That's good. How many years? They would take. Okay. All right. I get a smart Alec here. I'll, I do the jokes. All right. All right. It would take you 32 million years. That's how big 100 trillion is. It's 32 million years. That's the kind of numbers we're talking about. But, dude, it gets way more intense. Relax. Check this out. Each one of these little cells is composed of as many working parts, working parts, gears, hinges, in this little cell that is 100 trillion of them, that is about a, a 1 200th of a head of a pin. Anywhere from 1 200th to 1 100th, you could fit 100 cells end to end on a head of a pin. 100 to 200, that's the kind of scale we're talking about. Yet within that little tiny gel structure, you have as many working parts as you do in a Boeing 767. Six million working parts in this little, now come on. <laughs> It, it, you gotta see that's cool, right? And, and right? And then on the outside, you have a information processing chip called a membrane on the outside of each one of these things. And on the inside, you have a circle that is packed with 18 feet of DNA in a little space that's one two hundredth or to one one hundredth the size of a head of a pen. Please, come on, you cannot be that cold. You gotta be going, you gotta be blown away. Come on, where's your heart, people? Come on. <laughs> Come on, are you that jaded? It's amazing. That's what we are, and that's what we should be focusing on. 
I say, I like, I get titillated by the conspiracy stuff and all the fear stuff and all that, but you know what? That's what counts. And when I say a doctor can't help you, I mean he can't help you at that level because that cell is not stupid and it isn't going to take what the doctor's giving or any the medical model's giving. It has to be poisoned and it has to be hacked. Ripped out as in hacked. Cut open is what I'm talking about. So, anyway, within that cell you have 18 feet of DNA. That 18 feet of DNA in that little tiny space, if it were stretched out in all the cells of your body, would make up 340 billion miles. Hello? <laughs> Did you hear that? 340 billion miles of DNA in your body. Now come on. Now come on. Now come on. Now come on. All right? You've got a little computer chip multiplied by 100 trillion times with 6 million working parts that's capable of producing 50,000 different proteins in some cases and as spinning out chemical reactions with an intricacy and a nanostructure and a, a choreography that science fiction wouldn't even dare dream of. And you have that in your body and guess what people? That system is very delicate, very fragile. This is six million working parts spewing out thousands upon thousands of molecules per second. Per second. It's fragile. It's delicate. But that's not a problem because nature's perfect. The divine force is perfect. It has taken care of it for us. You need do nothing. How cool is that? You need do nothing. And if you don't believe me, if you think I'm just talking, go cut yourself and watch it heal. And that's exactly what you will be seeing. Cell division and growth and reproduction and repair and regeneration. That is your birthright. That is our birthright. That's all our birthright. That regenerative process is our birthright, which is why nobody needs to suffer. It's built into the level of the cell. So you have this amazing piece of raisin. And all, or piece of, uh, amazing piece of cell, uh, amazing cell, amazing piece of raisin bread. It's a raisin. It's a cell. It's a small little structure, and it's like an animal. In fact, the guy who discovered cells was named Robert Hooke. And Robert Hooke was a glassmaker in the 17th century, in the 1600s. And Robert Hooke made this glass thing, and he turned it into a microscope. And the first thing he did was get a glass, uh, a drop of water, and put it underneath. And he looked in the water, and he was like, oh my god, because up until then, they thought water was water. Today, we know it's packed with cells. And he called these little things animalcules. That was the first name for cells, animalcules, because they're animals. They do what animals do. And what does an animal do? An ad or what does an animal need? An animal needs to be fed. An animal needs to breathe. An uh, animal needs to detoxify. An animal needs to be fed. It needs to be nutriated. And it needs to detoxify. And that's it. And that's all your cell needs. It needs to be fed. And it needs to... Uh, be de uh, detoxified and it needs to respirate. It needs, it needs to be oxygenated. And all disease is the end result of cell starvation, toxification, and suffocation. Starvation, toxification, and suffocation. That's it, but it's at the level of the cell, not the thyroid. It's at the level of the cell, not the nerve. It's at the level of the cell, not the heart. Do you understand what I'm saying here? When we focus on the heart, and we focus on the bone, and we focus on the muscle, and we focus on the thyroid, and we focus on the brain, you're like the little boy with a finger in his dike, with the, putting his finger in the dike. Brain, head, oh no, that's my legs, now it's my arms, and everything else. You go nuts, and that's the plan. And that's the idea, because then you can't do anything. You don't know where to go. Of course you'll let him take your gallbladder out. And that gets my gallbladder pain away. The problem is at the level of a cell. All disease, all of it, cancer, heart disease, all of it, cell starvation, cell toxification, and cell suffocation. And we're in charge of that. Now, the bread, you say, now your next question should be, why does the cell break down? Shouldn't that be the logical question? What's going on? Okay, great, so, does that make sense first of all? Did you guys get that? That was a very, very, very important point. All disease is cell disease. All disease, it doesn't matter where it is, it's the cell that's breaking down. Now, so all disease is cell disease, cell suffocation, cell toxification, and cell starvation, right? You want me to say it again? You look like you're thinking about that. Star <laughs> <laughs> starvation, su starvation, suffocation, toxification. Starvation, suffocation, 
toxification. Mr. McGraw, is that good? Is that good? I like that. Okay. He's a teacher. Star starvation, suffocation, toxification. You're not falling asleep there, Mike, are you? Okay. Okay. So, starvation, suffocation, toxification. So your next question should be, why is the cell starving? Toxic and suffocating, correct? Am I right? That should be the logical next question. Okay. Well, to understand that, we got to talk about the bread. See, the bread is very important. The bread has been missed. We're focusing on the raisin, and this is what human beings do. We focus. Do you know when you focus out of the middle of your eyes, you go into what's called beta state? Any hypnosis, hypnotist in the room? Hypnotists? No? No hypnotists? You're not owning up to it, probably. Hypnotists are sneaky. Okay, well, <laughs> well, I study hypnosis because I like the mind. And there's something about uh, brain waves and hypnosis. And when you're concentrating and focus, you're in beta state. Beta state is when you're thinking and problem solving and concentrating. And you, if you're ever going crazy with your thoughts, that's beta state. Alpha state is a slower brainwave state, and that is on the outside part of your eyes. When you're not focusing, when you're only focusing peripherally, you're activating alpha state. We go through our lives focusing on the center and never missing the sides or the context. We're always focusing on the content and not the context. Does that make sense? You guys get that? The context gives you tremendous information. In the body, the content is the cell, and the cell is very important. That's the beta state. That's the center state. But on the sides around the cell, you have the matrix. And this matrix is amazing. Everything's amazing. Cell's amazing, of course. But the matrix is so amazing. Oh my god. It's where all the electricity is generated from. All the uh, growth fat, all the chemical energy and all the electrical energy is generated from to drive the stuff happening in a cell. In fact, it's really not even separate. The, the cell that's sitting in a matrix, it's really, a, the cell is part of the matrix. It's not even really separate. But the, all of the uh, a power that's sustaining the cell, the nurturing, matrix means mother, by the way. All the nurturing power, it comes from the same word, all the nurturing power comes from the matrix. The food comes from the matrix. The hormones come from the matrix. The growth factors, are you picturing how this is happening here? You've got your raisins in here. Raisin bread doesn't do justice to it because raisin, they're, they're inert, but this is happening dynamically in the body. So you have the cells, and they're being sustained, and they're being fed, and they're being breathed. Oxygen is coming in through the matrix. Are you with me? Is this, are we okay here? Okay. And then, and then the poisons are being drained. There's a little drainage system. The cell's doing its work really fast, really coordinated, really integrated, with an amazing intelligence. And it's producing wastes, and the wastes get drained out. And there's a little drainage system in the matrix. Please, come on. Are we okay? Is this cool? I mean, every time I even talk about it, I get blown away by this. You've got a drainage system that drains the waste away, and this is happening. Remember, this is happening one one hundredth the size of a head of a pen, one two hundredth the size of a head of a pen throughout your body. And so this stuff is being drained out, and everything's happy until something happens. Something happens. Because this is a perfect system. This is a perfect system until something happens. And you know what that something is called? We are conceived. That's when that happens. When it all begins to go wrong is when we're conceived. Now, I'm being a little facetious, but it's when we're born. But for some people, it's in the womb. We begin to break down for uh, many people prenatally and for most people as soon as we're born. Because you see, something happens when we're born that it almost is like a mistake. Nature doesn't make mistakes, but something happens when we're born. See, when we're born, we are born premature. We are born premature. Human beings have big heads. So we come out of the womb early. And because we come out of the womb early, nature has set up a system where we will mature, where she will mature, our, system, our, our, our body, through things that will come in through the diet. We come out with our digestive system and our immune system specifically immature. Mothers know this. Your babies, they all have some kind of uh, digestive things going on. Most babies have digestive things going on. Colic, for example. So when we come out of the womb, what's supposed to happen is you get bathed in this, in this uh, bacterial bath when you come out the, out the birth canal, right? You guys know this? You come out the birth canal, you get bathed in this bacterial bath goo, and those bacteria go in your mouth and go in your nose, and they go down into your digestive tract, and from that point forward, you are have your own personal bacterial family with you forever. That's your personal bacterial family. They make vitamins just for you. They detoxify just for you. 
They process fats and cholesterol and bile and hormones just for you. They're your own personal angels. They live right in your, in your digestive tract, right? And they implant at the time through your birth, through the birth pro birthing process, but they grow, nature's perfect, nature's wise, they grow and they're sustained by the most powerful food for humans on the planet. What is that? Breast milk. I'm t if you have a degenerative disease, people, go find a breast. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> go find a breast. Hey, that's good. I'm serious. You can quote me on that. That stuff, that stuff is so building. Breast milk is so building. It's so anabolic. It is so powerful. It is so anti-aging. It makes you young again. That's what we should be doing now. I haven't figured out how to go about doing that. We're working on it. Longevity, though. We're working on that. We got our scientists hard at work. No. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I'm talking about it breaks down at the digestive system level very early is what I'm talking about. We break down at a digestive system level very early. And this is where this whole uh, the uh, problems in the, at the bread level begin. See, the bread gets clogged very easily. And it especially gets clogged when poisons get into the body. This is the nexus of disease right here, people. The nexus of disease, this is where it begins, is right at the juncture of the intestine and the body. Your body, is a, your digestive system is a tube in the middle of your body. Your body is outside the tube. When that tube breaks down, foods literally enter into the body and they enter specifically into the blood. Once they enter into the blood, all hell breaks loose. This is where we break down. This is where the disease process begins. This is where that clogging at the bread level, this is where the bread becomes clogged because that's what happens. The bread becomes clogged. When you have a disease, you've got clogged bread. Can you picture this? This is a very important graphic. This is a very important thing for you to picture in your head. You've got clogged bread. Think of beautiful raisin bread and think of just dirt and gook and oil surrounding the raisins and you'll see why the raisins get sick and why they get starved and why they get suffocated and why they get toxic. Because the bread around them has clogged from stuff that's getting into the body through the digestive tract. And if you get sick of hearing me say, work on your digestion, when I on the radio, I get sick of it too, but you got to do it. But you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. So, the first thing that happens is the digestive system breaks down. Once the digestive system breaks down, it's a quick jump to the blood sugar system. Once your digestive system breaks down, it's a quick jump to the blood sugar system. And behind diabetes, you will find some kind of intestinal breakdown, usually with bacteria. And this is something that's just been, they're just finding out, although common sense will tell you, common sense will tell you, they're just finding it out from a research literature standpoint. If you Google, if you guys, and you're probably all into doing your research, so do your research. Endotoxemia and diabetes, or endotoxemia and blood sugar, endotoxemia and, and insulin. Endo means inside, toxemia means toxins. This is endotoxemia, are toxins that are produced by the wrong kind of bacteria in your gut. By the wrong kind of bacteria in your gut. This is where disease, the starting point of all disease is wrong kinds of bacteria in your gut, which is why this probiotic thing is so important. So, but I'll get to that in a second. So then it's a quick jump into blood sugar. And this is why diabetes, by the way, is a worldwide epidemic. It's a worldwide epidemic. You get endotoxemia, and what happens when you have endotoxemia is you get pancreatic breakdown, the pancreas can't make its insulin, your digestive system goes awry. Once your digestive system starts to become compromised and the bacteria become thrown off, then everything you eat feed the wrong bacteria, especially sugars, especially sugars. And this is called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Some of you may have heard of it, SIBO. And this is where you start to really get into big trouble is because the intestine is, becomes an a, 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 a inoculation petri dish for the wrong kind of bacteria. You are, have a petri dish just designed to grow the wrong kind of bacteria. And then you go into blood sugar issues, and after blood sugar issues, because the blood sugar goes up, the blood sugar goes down, there's a hormone in the body that's supposed to adjust, and that's called cortisol. Eventually, that's made by your adrenal glands, eventually your adrenals bust. Your adrenals are your stress glands. I call this the triangle of disease. And all disease is afterwards. All disease is after this triad of digestive breakdown, blood sugar breakdown, and then adrenal, I should tell you, thyroid breakdown because there's a relationship between the adrenals and the thyroid. The adrenals give you 
get up and go. You ever see the old movies or the old uh, caricature where the old lady picks up the car off the kid, right? You know that, that whole, anybody ever seen those? That kind of, kind of myth that's out there? Well, that's adrenaline that make, gives you that power. Your adrenal glands give you turbo energy. And they're only supposed to run turbo. They're not supposed to run all the time, but for many of us, they run all the time. Your thyroid, and women, listen up, because hypothyroidism is like an epidemic, especially for women, but also for men. The adrenal glands are, uh, are your, fight, uh, your uh, emergency energy glands. Your thyroid is your regular energy gland. And the fastest way to shut down your thyroid is to be hyperadrenal. The fastest way to shut down your thyroid, because your thyroid will compensate. So if you are hypo, a thyroid, if they've been told you got hypothyroidism, you need to focus on the adrenals and then the blood sugar and the digestive system, the whole triangle, really. And hypothyroidism is the jumping off point to everything. Behind all disease, you will find hypothyroidism, secondary to adrenal, blood sugar, and digestive. And that's the triangle of disease. Now, the point is, is that if you focus on the triangle, everything else will take care of itself. Your heart will take care of itself, your MS will take care of itself, your autoimmune disease will take care of itself. All of it, if you focus on the triangle. Now the problem is, is while I'm saying this to you guys, it's, not, it's a hard sell. It's not, you'll be like, but my bones. What about my bones? And I know because that's how people say it. They say that to me, but my bones, but my muscles, but my God. You have to have faith that the body can do it if you focus on the systems behind it. You have to have faith that the right fruit will grow if you take care of the ground. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to understand that your body is healing. To, it's a built-in healing system. It's designed to heal. It's designed to heal, and you have to understand that. Once you understand that, then you can, you'll be like, there's no way I'm going to the doctor. But you see, we still, we say it, but it's still a jump to say, well, how is my bowel movements related to my bones? You understand what I'm saying? There's a disconnect on some level, and you have to understand the logic of this triangle of disease. You have to understand that, that your uh, 12,000 different diseases are the fruits, they're the leaves of the breakdown process that occurs at the core. And this is such good news. This is the most amazing news because, and this is why I call the program The Bright Side, because it means that we don't have to worry about all these different leaves. We don't have to worry about this leaf and this leaf and this leaf. We just have to worry about the root. And just like there's a tr or the tree or the root or the soil, however you want to look at it, and just like there's a triangle of disease, there's a square of health. You've got the triangle of disease, you've got the square of health. All right? The, the triangle of disease is the digestive system, the, the uh, uh, and by the way, I'm going to take I know some of you guys have questions. I want you, if you have questions, to ask in front of everybody. I'm going to leave extra time for questions because I want everybody to hear everybody's questions because I want you guys to be able to do this yourself. I want you guys to hear your, your friends' problems and, and be able to troubleshoot and backtrack it yourself. So I want to take a lot of questions here tonight. Okay? So if you have questions, I will get to all of them. I'd rather you, have, you ask them while everybody can hear it rather than later. Okay, so triangle disease is the digestive system, the blood sugar, and the adrenal thyroid complex. I call it adrenal thyroid axis. Are we good on that? Does that make sense? It starts off at birth, goes into the standard American diet, of course, and, and then it goes into blood sugar changes, and then it goes into adrenal stress, and then thyroid slows down, everything shuts down. Are we good? Yeah. That wasn't a very reassuring. Yeah. I want you to get that. <laughs> okay, triangle disease, yes? Yes, yes in the back? Yes? Okay. So then you got the square of health. The square of health. Square of health, yes. Got that? Square of health. <laughs> square of health. Nutriate, respirate, move, and rest. Nutriate, that's all you need to know, okay? All you need to know. Nutriate, respirate, move, and rest, okay? So let's take movement first, all right? Movement's very important. We have this culture where we talk about stress all the time. Oh, you got too much stress. Oh, you got so much stress in your life. When do you have the least amount of stress? Sleeping. Sleeping? No. <laughs> when you're dead, that's when you have the least amount of stress. Thank you. That's what somebody said over there. When you're dead, because the life force is stress. The body grows under conditions of stress. It's a really cool, I've been doing this, I've been saying this for many years. And I remember I was at, uh, uh, I, was at the uh, I was doing a talk in LA and I, before the talk I went to the magazine rack at the 7-Eleven I picked up a Time magazine and ran the cover. It said stress is your friend. We talked about stress. The importance of stress. How you use stress. There's a new book that just came out. It's called Anti-Fragile. You may ever see this? This guy made up a term for the, how, amazing the lack of, uh, how amazing stress is for building life and he calls it anti-fragility. 
Anybody hear his book, The, the Black Swan? Okay, well, in any case, today we're, we're under, you read The Black Swan? You heard The Black Swan? Okay, so anyway, the point I'm making is stress is your friend. The body is designed to grow under conditions of stress. It doesn't matter what that stress is. Stress is, tells the body it's time to grow. This is why one of the most powerful anti-aging tools you can ever use, the mo one of the most powerful anti-aging tools you could ever use is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting. Because when you fast, your body goes into stress mode. And it builds muscle so you can go out and get some food. Well, logically, if that's anti-aging, what do you think pro-aging is? Yeah. Right? What we do eight times a day, sometimes more. Okay? So the point is, is when the body has slight, slight amount of stress, the correct amount of stress, it, it gets the message, it better grow. It better build. And when we talk about reversing degenerative disease, we're talking about building. We're talking about being a bodybuilder. You're bodybuilders if you want to reverse degenerative disease. And bodybuilders make a good living reversing breakdown. They don't call it degenerative disease. They're not degenerating, really, but they're going into build-up mode. They're going into build-up mode. There's two great movements in the body. There's two great movements in the body. There's two great movements in life. Ancient people called it yang and yin. In the body, you have these two great movements of breakdown and build-up. If anybody's a chemist, any chemist in this room? You guys brought me a projector, but nothing to write on. Or nothing to write with. Anything to write with? Guys, I don't have anything to write with. Okay, but let me, I don't need that, but if you could get me a pen, that would be awesome. Some, a marker of some kind. Um, they're going to get a marker. There's two great movements in the body. You have one movement that goes towards build up and one movement that goes towards breakdown. It's like in your business. In business, you've got two great movements. They're called in the red and in the black. Spending and making, spending and earning, right? And in business, it doesn't matter if it costs you a million dollars if you're making two million, right? What matters? Bottom line. That's what matters. You're always spending in business. You're always making in business. What matters is the bottom line. Body's the same way. It's always spending. That's breaking down. That's how when the body breaks down, it's spending really. It's releasing energy. And then there's build up. That's making money. When you're young and you're beautiful and you're healthy and you got a little, or you're five years old, you know how we look at five-year-old kids and we're like, oh my God, where did I go? Just like that, you know? What you're looking at is, I do that. You're just looking at him, you're seeing buildup in its most primal state. The highest, the highest degree of buildup in the black that you can imagine. That kid is so in the black, you just, you just want to get some of that energy by looking at him. And then you go look at somebody who's degenerating, somebody who's breaking down. You know what the difference is? That difference is in the red and in the black. When you, somebody's coming out of the hospital, they're in breakdown mode. When somebody has cancer, they're in breakdown mode. When somebody has degenerative disease, they're in breakdown mode. Our job should be to figure out how to reverse that breakdown mode. How to reverse that breakdown and turn it into build up in the most powerful, one of the most powerful ways, almost like little magical pixie dust that turns on the building in, in uh, chemistry or biology, we call it anabolism. Anabolism, anybody here anabolic steroids, anabolic hormones, right? Anabolism means building up. Catabolism means breaking down. Anabolism and catabolism together make up metabolism. And if you've ever heard of a metabolic disease, which is what all diseases are, what you have is a in the red disease. You have a disease where you're in the red. That's what a metabolic disease is. I love this new, not new, that came out about 15 years ago. Metabolic syndrome, they call it. They always have a syndrome. You know what a syndrome is? It's when they have a bunch of things happening. And it's all in one thing, so they call it a syndrome. Metabolic syndrome always cracked me up because that means everything's going wrong. Your whole body's going wrong because everything is metabolic. Metabolic is the sum total of all the chemistry in your body. So our job should be to reverse the breakdown process, turn it into a building up process, and the number one, or the pixie dust that turns on the building process is stress. How do you like that? You think it's important? You say, oh my God, I should be Superman, right? I got so much darn stress. It's not right. Ah, there's a catch to it. There's a catch to it. You see, stress occurs within a context of rest. See, the body likes stress in short bursts and then long, luscious rest. At eight, we should be working one day a week. If you worked one day a week, you would love your job. 
If you worked only two hours a week, you'd be like, no, I want to stay longer. I want more. No, two hours, I'm not going to be back for another, right? That's what we should be doing. It's not work that we hate. We love work. We just don't want to work 40 hours. <laughs> just I love it. You know, I want to work for maybe six hours, five hours, you know? The body loves a little bit of stress and a lot of rest. A lot, long, and that's the way we were born, or that's the way we grew up. On the African savanna, many years ago, hunter-gatherers, they would go out hunt, it would, they'd have a lot of stress, and then they'd kick back and eat their wildebeest for a while. And they'd have a lot of rest, and it was only when agriculture came around that we started to have to really work. That's when, we, that's when you had to really till the fields. Our bodies aren't built that way. Our bodies are not built the way we're treating our bodies in so many different ways. This is the problem with sugar. Our body's not built to handle sugar. It didn't have sugar in the African savanna. There was no fructose. If people talk about how wonderful fruit is, there were no, there were no big apples on the African savanna. We were lucky if you had a berry. You know, that's the kind of sugars we need. We're not living in a, an appropriate way for, our bio, for the way our biology developed. Our biology developed to have certain things to, uh, uh, so that certain things would trigger the growth response. Why would stress trigger a growth response? It's survival. It's built in so the, the animals that survived were the ones who grew when there was stress. The animals who didn't grow, they didn't have descendants like us. It's the way biology works. So uh, we're designed to handle, to, not handle, to grow under certain conditions of stress. And by the way, if you don't want to lose your mind, more Alzheimer's disease, you get older, you get forgetful, do crossword puzzles, <laughs> right? Learn a new language, study something different. There's something that happens when we get old. It happens to men, it happens to women, but I, and it happens to young people too. And I call it old man's disease, okay? But it happens to women and it happens to kids. Old man's disease, my, I named it after my dad. I discovered it a while ago. He was old. Old man's disease is when you know everything. Everything. Nobody can tell you anything. You know exactly how it is. That's called old man's disease, right? And women have it and kids have it. Everybody has it, right? Right? So you must know somebody with old man's disease, yes? Oh, okay. You've been called out there, buddy. All right. All right. All right. But the point is, is that we shrivel. We shrivel up when we get we become ossified and calcified and fossilized when we have old man's disease. And as we get older and we know everything, we want to be open to new things, always open to new things, always hearing different things. So you want to be, you want to be able to take in, you want to be able to understand this balance. First of all, you want to be able to uh, understand this balance between stress and rest. Okay? So I don't, want to, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Stress a little bit, work, or stress a little bit, rest a long period of time in the gym. If you ever spend more than 15 minutes in the gym a day, you are doing way, you must have a lot of time to kill because you don't need to spend more than 15 minutes a day in the gym if you do it right. If you're doing sit-ups and you're doing 200 sit-ups, you're, you're doing them the wrong way because if I show you how to do sit-ups, you won't even be able to do two. <laughs> two. One, maybe. And let me tell you something else. For people who can't work out, you can get a great, you don't need P90X, you can get a great butt and leg workout just getting out of a chair if you do it correctly. You want to try it? Watch this, okay? Watch this. She's not even going to be able to do this. Get out of the chair, but get out really slowly. No, no, super slowly. Take 30 seconds to get up. Take 30 seconds. No, oh. ah, I see. <laughs> do it one time. One time. Just do it one time. That's all you'll need. You'll get the best butt workout ever. Do it once a day. Once a day. Once a day. Do it with curls. Do it with a five-pound set of dumbbells. Get a five-pound set of dumbbells. Do super slow. Super, super slow. You won't believe. You won't even be able to do two of them. Three of them, and you'll be done in less than five minutes. That's the kind of stress, that's the kind of stress the body responds to. <clears throat> that's the kind of stress the body responds to. Quick bursts of it. If you're gonna run, you don't need to run far. Sprint. Sprint for 15 seconds. Watch what happens. That's the kind of workout that you want to do. Are you are you laughing at me or with me? I can't tell. <laughs> with me, okay, good. That's the, kind of, that's the kind of stress that you want. Quick burst of stress followed by long rest. Okay, so remember, it's four, it's four parts. Rest, you, we don't need any help with rest. Although maybe we do. Maybe we do, unfortunately, need some help with rest, right? All right that's, and that, maybe this is a good thing to, to mention real quickly. Degenerative disease is a manifestation, a visible manifestation, a breakdown, uh, an accelerated breakdown, spending too more than you're making. You're in the red, right? 
But what is it that causes it? I talked about the food getting into the body. It's all a defensive reaction. We are, our bodies are in emergency mode. We have two modes, we have, uh, there's lots of pairs of modes of being. One is relaxation and rest. But another one, I'm sorry, one is build up and break down. Another one is relaxation and rest, or, or stress and relaxation. Relaxation tells the body to grow. Relaxation tells the body it's safe. We, if we're going to have a degenerative disease, your job is to tell the body it's safe, like it was a baby. Like it was a baby. Now you can't, you can talk to it, you certainly can talk to your body. But when I say to tell the body you're safe, I'm talking about chemically. To create a chemical terrain where the body is safe. It's told it's safe. Does this make sense? Any, the brain is constantly reading the blood. Your brain is a dumbass. Okay? It's in your skull. It doesn't know what's happening. It's in your skull. And it's reading the blood to determine what's happening. That's how it knows what's happening. The blood is going through and it's reading the chemistry. And when it reads the chemistry that tells it there is some kind of alert or some kind of emergency, it goes into safe mode. It turns everything into safe mode. You know how in your computer, when your computer is ready to crash, it will, before it totally crashes, it'll go into safe mode? And it's like you can just barely do certain things, but you can't do everything? That's what happens to the body. When the brain thinks it's under attack, or it thinks it's starving, or it thinks it's some kind of stress, it goes into safe mode. And it will not go into building until it's out of safe mode. So our job is to get it out of safe mode. And pretty much everything I'm talking about with nutriate, nutriate, move and rest, uh, nutriate, respirate, move and rest, is getting the body, the brain to think the body's safe. Your job, everybody here, if you're dealing with degenerative disease, it's even more so, but everybody here, is to make your body feel safe. Can you relate to this? When you have high blood pressure, this is your body in an emergency mode. When you have blood clotting, this is a classic sign of a body under attack. When you have inflammation of any kind, you are witnessing the defense department trying to protect the body. And under these conditions, the body will not grow. Under these conditions, the body will not repair. And un under these conditions, our birthright of regeneration will not occur when the body is under attack. Many of you in this room, if not all of us in this room, have, are doing things that create an environment where our body is freaked the hell out. All right, do you guys get this? Freaked out, freaked out. And I can tell by looking, but you guys are in it and you know. If you have high blood pressure, your body is freaking out. This is why nutrient respirate, move, and rest work so well. They tell the body it is safe. It is safe. So when you take rest, and I said, I'm telling you this because of the rest period, we really have to know how to rest. How ironic. We really need to know how to rest. You want to know how to rest correctly? Go look at your baby when he's sleeping. That's how you rest. You want to know how to breathe correctly? Watch your baby when he's sleeping. Babies, babies those innocent, they have no idea what awaits them in the world. Right? They are still oblivious. That's why, that's why we love babies. They're still oblivious. Well, we have to learn to rest like a baby. And one of the most important things is breathing. And it's the simplest thing. It is so simple to breathe, but you turn on the body's relaxation response with the breath. It's called the parasympathetic nervous system. You have two nervous systems. Remember, there's two great movements in the body at all times. You've got stress and you've got rest. You've got breakdown and you've got build up. You have a parasympathetic and you have a sympathetic nervous system. These are two nervous systems. The nervous system of stress is the nervous system that gets you ready to run from a saber-toothed tiger. It closes down your blood vessels so that more pressure will come out into all of, the blood will come out at a higher pressure to more organs so they get more oxygen. And it will clot your blood in preparation for being eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. That's what blood clotting is. When the body clots, it, when the blood clots, it's clotting so it doesn't hemorrhage to death when you get bit by that saber-toothed tiger. It also happens when your body thinks it's going to be, when your body's about to be cut by a surgeon. That's why if you've ever had surgery, what's the drug they give you when you come out? It's called Coumadin. And it's a nasty, nasty drug. It's a blood thinning drug because your body is freaked out. It is freaked out. And so what happens? It closes up on the blood vessels. There's these generic things that happen into the, to the body when it's under stress. And lack of oxygen is a major stress. Major stress. And nobody breathes correctly. 
We don't breathe correctly, so we pretty much go throughout the day telling our body, stay in safe mode, don't grow, don't repair, degenerate. And then we wonder why we have anxiety, why we have panic attacks, why we're freaked out. We're contracted. Every time you're wounded emotionally, psychologically, you get into a little contraction. Think about something that's unpleasant right now and you'll notice that you're contracting. Do you notice this? You know how they say when you're a drunk driver never gets hurt in the accident, it's always the other guy because he's all relaxed, right? Because when the accident happens, he doesn't contract. Talk to a football player, they'll tell you how they take the big hits. They completely relax right before they get the big hit. If you can, we have a tendency to contract every time we have some kind of emotional or existential or psychological pain. Wilhelm Reich, anybody hear Wilhelm Reich? He talked about this. Every time you contract, every time you're in pain, you contract. Every time something happens, you contract. Well, each one of these little contractions is a point of anoxia or hypoxia, low oxygen. Each one of these, and you add them all up and you've got a suffocated body that is in constant alert mode, hypervigilant mode, not good. Remember, the body grows under conditions of rest. We go throughout the day putting the body under the exact opposite conditions. We spend our entire day telling the body there's a saber-toothed tiger chasing us, right? And that's why I get really mad when somebody says, well, just take this or just take that, because that's not fair. If your body thinks the saber-toothed tiger is coming after you, it's not going to help you what you take. And this is why sometimes people get a, a nutrition or alternative practitioners or you know, people who understand certain things get a bad rap, because they're trying to treat a body that's in, in safe mode without addressing the body's uh, uh, stress, uh, emergency, emergency state, hypervigilance state. What's so cool about this is we control it. We control it. People, we control it. Do you know every time you think a crappy thought, guess who gets punished and hurt? Every time you think how much you hate that person, you're jealous of that person, you're mad at that person, who are you hurting? Myself. Yes. <laughs> Where's that chemistry going? Whose cortisol's going up? Whose adrenaline's going up? Who's shortening their lifespan every time you do that? We have something in our head called mirror neurons. Anybody know about mirror neurons? Mirror neurons, right? Mirror neurons, you look at somebody else and you feel what they're feeling. There's neurology in your head that mirrors other people's uh, state of being. So we have control over this emergency response. And if you leave right now and you learn nothing else, Learn to control this emergency state that we're all under. And it could be simple, something as simple as deep breathing. And if you don't believe me, get a blood pressure cuff. How many of you have done this? Get a blood pressure cuff and you put it on and you take your blood pressure and then you do five minutes of deep breathing. I have an app on my iPhone. Do you ever see that app on the iPhone? My Calm Beat. You just look at it and you just practice your deep breathing right there. And, and by the way, you have to learn how to deep breathe. The belly goes out. You want to deep breathe once? Do it one deep breath. You always do it slow. This is the key, you're always slow, as slow as you can actually, and then through the nose, and as, you're, as the breath comes down, the belly goes out like a balloon. And you have a, a muscle here that goes down called your diaphragm, you make yourself look really silly and fat, and so you gotta deal with it. And then push belly out, and then on the exhale, slow on the exhale. And you can almost feel how you relax, almost that. Now imagine if you do that, you, did you guys feel this? Okay, not just once. Imagine you do it all day. Imagine you do it every day. Imagine what that would do. How that would shut down that stress response. How it would shut, and that's so easy. You don't need a drug. You don't need a doctor. You don't need Obamacare. You don't need insurance companies. You don't need pharmacy. That's it. This is all ours. This is the bright side. This is the good news. This is all ours. This is all ours. We own this. No cost is free. Breath is free. There's a reason why ancient people called God the breath and breath spirit. It's the same word in Greek. It's as simple as that. So, nutrient, respirate, move, and rest. Now, when I say respirate and I talk about breathing, this is very important, this oxygenation. And by the way, when you blow, exhale, you're blowing out poison. People want a detox program? Great detox program right there. So you got nutri uh, nutrient, respirate, move, and rest. But in terms of oxygenation, we're talking about at the cell level. And this is very important. And this will get us into our next, into the fourth point on the square. And that is the idea that when we're talking about oxygenation, when we're talking about respiration, we're talking about oxygenation. What does oxygen do? What does it do? What do you do? You have a fire. If you want to make that fire hotter, what do you do? You add what? Oxygen, right? Right? Well, how, you know how they make steel? Anybody know the story about how they make steel? 
they figure out how to way to super oxygenate the fire. So it gets super, super hot. And a guy named Remington, I think, was the guy who developed this process for creating a super oxygenated fire so it could heat, heat iron and turn it into steel. In any case, oxygen makes things burn. It doesn't burn, by the way. It makes things burn. And your cells have figured out how to use oxygen. It's actually not even your cells. It's little structures inside your cells. Anybody know what these little structures are called? Remember those, that little tiny thing we call a cell that was 1 100th or 1 200th the size of a head of a pin? Well, inside of it, this little thing, there are 100, sometimes 1,000 or more little structures that burn oxygen like your fireplace burns oxygen or like your engine burns oxygen, except it doesn't burn this kind of oxygen. It burns atoms of oxygen. Mitochondria. Yes, they're called mitochondria, exactly. They're called mitochondria, and the mitochondria burn atoms of oxygen. So every time you breathe, oxygen filters its way through the blood and through the lymph and on red blood cells and, and rides on red blood cells and is distributed in a little, boop, little drop of oxygen, a little molecule of oxygen, and the cell is a magnet. This is creating an electrical current, and it goes, pulls in the oxygen. And then the oxygen goes into the cell, and then it goes into the mitochondria. I'm not even going to tell you what happens in there. Holy moly. Google <laughs> electron transport. Google YouTube electron transport if you really want to get a kick out of what the body's like. Electron transport. That's, that's amazing stuff right there. In any case, the mitochondria burn the oxygen. But under conditions of lack of oxygen, it can't happen that way, and it has to go into a secondary source of, of energy production, and that is sugar. We call that kind of cell, by the way, a cancer cell. Cancer cell is a cell that has not gotten oxygenated for so long, it knows how to burn sugar. So when I talk about respiration, I'm talking about not just respiration through the big picture, I'm talking about cellular respiration. And that's really what's happening as you breathe, is you're feeding cells oxygen. Because remember, all disease is cell disease. And what happens to cells is they suffocate, they become toxic, and they become starved. And so when you breathe, you're taking care of the suffocation, hopefully. So if you want to do nothing else but take care of your health, practice deep breathing. Oxygenate your cells. Now, the second thing, uh, the last, thing, last point on our square is nutriate. And before I get into nutriate, I do have to say that in the healing world, and I say this periodically, but I don't say it anywhere near enough, in the world of health, in the world of wellness, it's multidimensional. Health and wellness are spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical, in that order. Spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. And the way I look at it is crisis is spiritual crisis. Health crisis is spiritual crisis. And every time you think a thought, it gets turned into your body. And every time you feel a feeling, it gets turned into your body via the action of hormones. That's what a hormone does. Is it takes thought energy and feeling energy, one of the things, and turns it into chemical energy and makes your body. This is not some Boulder, Colorado, hippy-dippy, airy-fairy talk. This is hardcore biochemistry science. Thoughts and feelings get, create your body. So I say this because I, I don't want to be portrayed in any way, shape, or form, especially if we're going to be uploaded on YouTube, I don't want to be portrayed in any way, shape, or form as the nutrition, kind of nutritionist that says, oh, just take this vitamin and that vitamin, and you'll be fine. You have to understand spiritual, mental, emotional, and then physical. Are we good? Okay? All right, now, from a physical perspective, we talked about respiration, we talked about movement, and we talked about rest. We have to talk about my favorite way to work with the healing process, to work with the healing body, and that is nutrition. Now, to this day, I am blown away by people who say to me, Oh, I don't believe in that nutrition stuff. I have a guy upstairs, he's a doctor, lives upstairs for me, and he says, oh, are you still, I told him about nutrition, is that vitamins and stuff? And this is the doctor saying this to me, okay? We still don't get the fundamental point about nutrition. You are nutrition, we are vitamin C, I am fatty acids, I am protein, I am zinc, you are iron and magnesium, we are nutrition. That's what nutrition is, it's us. It's us. When you eat a carrot, you end up with little pieces of carrot in your eyes. When you take supplements, you wear them on your skin. They're in your skin. They're stored. They go through your digestive tract. They go in your skin. You are nutrition. How should this be a tart cell to anybody? Because it's hidden in plain sight. It seems it's so obvious. We don't even notice it. We are nutrition. How dare anybody put us on a drug when we are nutrition? 
How dare anybody look down their nose or have any kind of negative derogatory thing to say about nutrition when we are that? We are that. It is the fundamental component of your material body. And to not be taking advantage of that is stupidity. Excuse me. I'm sorry. It's stupidity to not be exploiting the availability of nutrition and nutritional supplements if you have a breakdown or no matter what, even if you're healthy. We are nutrition, but we don't know anything about nutrition, unfortunately. And much of what we do think we know, maybe you hear of the Sturgeon's, Sturgeon's Law. Have you ever heard of Sturgeon's Law? Sturgeon's Law is 90% of what we know is bull crap. <laughs> it's called Sturgeon's Law. That's basically how it is. We, oh, we have so many misunderstandings. I said earlier, cholesterol is great for you. Eat it. There's no top end. The best foods in the world are cholesterol. Salt is great for you. This is one of Dr. Wallach's true, wherever Dr. Wallach is, one of his true geniuses, uh, genius insights was how important salt was. Minerals were for you. Salt is minerals. That's what minerals are. They're salt. Low salt diet. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Serotonin. How many of you heard me talking about serotonin, right? Serotonin, happy hormone. No! Serotonin is a stress hormone. Why do you think people go nuts on serotonin? We have so many misunderstandings in the world of nutrition and in the world of uh, how we take care of ourselves from a dietary perspective. So we have to understand the basics. The basics are simple as macronutrition and micronutrition. Macro and micro. Macro meaning big, micro meaning small. Macro is protein, fats, good sugars, fiber, and water. Simple as that. Protein, nobody, 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 unless they're super concentrating on protein, they're a bodybuilder, they're an athlete, they're making millions of dollars on their bodies, is using protein correctly. Why do you think athletes use protein? What are, what are athletes trying to do? Are they trying to get weaker? Are they trying to degenerate? Are they trying to break down? No, no, they're trying to build. We're all athletes. Getting your butt out of bed in the morning is an athletic event. We're all friggin' athletes. We're all athletes, that's right. That's right. You better believe it. Everything we do is that type of, it's going against entropy somehow, <laughs> you know? That's what the life force is. Of course you need protein. Who, I hear people say all the time, oh, you don't need that much protein. It's just, it's, it's oh, no, you don't, 10 grams, 13 grams, 15 grams. Half a gram to a gram per pound of body weight and your body will tell you when you've had enough protein. It'll tell you, listen, our bodies are always talking to us and we don't listen. Everybody's, everybody knows that their bodies are talking to us. You've all heard it, right? Thank you. You all heard it. Take the, the how many of you guys like Snickers bars? What? Snickers bars. <laughs> Snickers bars. You know what I'm going to do, but I want to do it for the strange, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do this for the people, the new people here. How many of you guys like, you like Snickers bar? Where's that point? Somebody over here. So you got the, okay, guilty. He's smiling like he's guilty over there. All right, good. They, you know what? If you like Snickers bars, don't worry about it. They know how to make you like Snickers bars. They know every little sound. You know when you rip the candy bar, when you, that tape, that sound is scientifically designed, the right frequency so it hits the right part of your brain to make you want that. <laughs> next, time, next time you get a McDonald's hamburger, unwrap it and you'll think, oh, it's Christmas, in the back of your head. <laughs> in the back of your head. It'll be in the back of your head. It'll be like you're, oh, a present, you know? That's planned. They know. There's, inst there's PhDs that understand how these things work. There's a place called the Morell. It's, it's either the Morell or the Manel Institute, Morell Institute in Philadelphia, where it's all funded by drug companies and food companies, and they study how every molecule affects every part of your, of your uh, desire center in your brain to, know, to make you to like certain foods. So if you like Snickers bars, it's not your fault. They got it figured out, okay? <laughs> but the next time you have a Snickers bar, or anybody, because we all have our little vices, don't be laughing, you all have yours, right? So uh, next time you have your Snickers bar, open it up real slow. What's that? No. no, yeah, that's sneaky. Oh, you're a sneaky man. Okay, that's a sneaky trick. No, you, you open it up real slowly, and as you're opening it up, raise it to your mouth and listen real close, and you, you'll hear a voice go, No! <laughs> Just, have you heard it? Do you know what I'm talking about? You, have, you haven't heard it? Come on, and you're not listening, because it's there. It's a still small voice, and it will always talk to you. It will always tell you. It'll always tell you, we just don't listen to our bodies. Protein will tell you nobody binges on protein. Nobody binges on protein. And the best kind of protein is the building protein. I said earlier, I was teasing about finding a breast. Well, it might be difficult, okay, granted. Find yourself, find yourself, 
find yourself some whey protein. It's the next best thing. It's the next best thing, whey protein. I've been talking about whey protein for a long time because I used to work out, I used to be an athlete, and I used to participate in that world, and we all knew about whey protein. Because bodybuilders are making money, their livelihood or their passion is to build their bodies. And they know about the power of protein, and especially the power of whey protein. Whey protein is where the building factors are concentrated. And so I always have people tell me about, and I know milk is a problem, Milk is definitely a problem. Whey tends to be less problematic than milk. And, and these days, cows and milk is it's not the greatest in the world, so you've got to be careful with your whey protein. So I have vegetarians and vegans tell me, well, you know, the problems with whey, and we use hemp seed, and it's just as good, and soy. No, it's not. Whey protein is loaded with growth factors for growing an animal. That's what whey protein has that soy doesn't have, that hemp doesn't have, much as these can be valuable. Egg and whey are the two best proteins, and you're crazy if you're throwing out the yolk. That is more stupid, stupid medical information to throw out the yolk. That is a mother load, powerhouse of nutrition. That yolk, you should, if you're throwing anything, throw out the white and keep the yolk. But you need them both. Don't throw anything. Don't throw anything. That's all powerful medicine. Powerful, powerful medicine because an egg is a life force. It's a life. It's everything that you need to be alive. It's a cell. An egg is not an, is not an egg. It's an egg cell. Do you know this? We call it an egg, but it's an egg cell. It is you. It is a cell. You're eating a cell. You're eating everything that's in a cell, and it's a big one loaded with lots of parts. So eat the egg and eat the whey and get your protein. Uh, we've been talking about serotonin here on the radio program. You guys heard me talking about serotonin. Build your own darn serotonin. If you're on Lexapro or you're Zoloft, you want to get off of it? You want to know somebody, who's on it? know somebody who's on it? Build your own darn serotonin. If that's a problem, and serotonin depletion may or may not be a problem. It's not always a problem. Sometimes people say it is, but if it is, you can make your own. The number one best way to make your own, well, number two best way, the number one best way to make your own serotonin is get yourself in the sun. More medical stupidity. The sun, uh, the uh, serotonin, or tryptophan and serotonin protect your skin from the sun. And when you're out in the sun, this is when you want to make sure that you're taking in your building materials, your anti-aging, anti-breakdown nutrients when you're in the sun. The problem isn't the sun. The problem is we're breaking down. The sun is your friend if you're healthy, but it's not your friend if you're breaking down. So, upregulating, getting out in the sun is one of the best ways to make your own serotonin, but if you're wearing sunscreen, guess what? You ain't making serotonin. And you're probably not doing yourself any good if you wear sunglasses either, by the way, because there's a reaction that occurs in your brain through sunlight in your eyes. In any case, the best, second best way from a nutritional standpoint to build serotonin is to eat protein with with carbohydrates. They say, oh my God, low carb. What's with this carb thing? Okay, this is where we're missing about carbs. You know most of your calories should come from carbs. Most of your calories. Low carb is not low carb. Low carb is low refined carb. Do not throw out the baby with the bath water when it comes to carbs. So our second, that's our third chapter, we'll talk about it now. Carbohydrates are extremely important, but there's one kind of carbohydrate that you need that's a powerful building carbohydrate. What is that? Vegetables. Vegetables, vegetables, vegetables. Eating vegetables with your protein is how you build serotonin and make your own serotonin. So if somebody is want, trying to get off Lexapro or Zoloft, wean them off of it, make sure they're getting protein and make sure that they're getting um, uh, car vegetable, vegetable carbohydrates with it and make sure they're getting out in the sun. Okay, uh, third, chapter two is essential fatty acids, essential fats, and the most important of the fats are essential fatty acids. People, essential fatty acids are part of the Mighty 90 for a reason. The Mighty 90 is all the nutritional stuff, all the nutritional components that you need to build a body. You can't get everything you need from food. It isn't going to happen. I wish it were going to happen. I wish it were going to happen that we could get everything from food. You can't, especially when it comes to fats, because fats are unstable, which is why you need the Mighty 90. Which is why if you have a degenerative disease and you haven't given the Mighty 90 a chance, you're missing one of the most powerful, powerful healing modalities that you will ever interact with that drugs cannot even come close to touching. We'll talk about that in a second, but one of the most important components is something called essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids are beyond important. I, I don't know how to express you how fundamentally important they are, but just to give you a couple little, flavor, a couple little ideas, you cannot grow protein without fat. 
without essential fatty acids. If you're breaking down and you're interested in reversing the breakdown process, essential fatty acids act as what are called transcription factors. They support protein manufacturing at the genetic level. They turn on protein production at the genetic level. The problem with EFAs is they're almost impossible to get in food. Listen, these are so important that they turn on genetics, but they're almost impossible to get from food. The only way you can get essential fatty acids in generous amounts is through nutritional supplementation. Get yourself on the ultimate EFAs. Get yourself on the essential fatty acids. If you're going to pick, if you're going to pick one, two products to get, get the ultimate classic and get the essential fatty acids. That's how fundamental essential fats, and, and you can tell how deficient you are in essential fats by how much you crave fatty food. Fatty food craving is your body's cry for essential fatty acids. Now, if you don't believe me, and you should all be, you should all be hippies here, you all should want to be skeptical, okay? Go get yourself a bunch of essential fatty acids, go get some ultimate EFAs, and swallow 30 pills. It won't hurt you, it'll be good for you. 30 of them, all right? And then see if any fatty food tastes good to you after that. Think about, think if french fries will sound good to you after that, they won't. Because once you've reached a certain amount of fat, chemistry will be triggered in your brain that will shut down fat drives. And this is why, this is how you want to diet. You don't want to struggle. Look, I have, I hate willpower. I have none, zero. Zero willpower, you shouldn't need willpower. Willpower is like there's a battle going on, right? There's this fight, oh, I have to have it, no, I can't, oh my God, I gotta have, no, I can't. Yeah, that's not a good situation. You wanna hit your brain's satiety centers. You wanna hit your brain's turn off centers. When you eat protein, you hit the, your brain's energy turn off center so it doesn't need any more energizing. And you won't want sugar anymore. That's one of the best ways to get off sugar is eat more protein. How many of you have experienced this? Okay, everybody, try it. Eat, this, this is shown experimentally. When animals have enough protein, they don't eat sugar. You hit your brain satiety center. Fats are the same way. You take essential fatty acids, you won't crave french fries, you won't crave ice cream, you won't crave buttery, uh, not that there's anything wrong with butter, by the way. You won't crave the fatty foods that you usually crave. The point is, is that you don't need willpower. One of the most common things people say when they get on the Beyond Tang Tangerine, which as you know is my favorite product, my favorite longevity product, okay? I mean, everybody's got their favorites, that's my favorite. My favorite thing about it is people lose weight without even trying. I hear this all the time. I didn't even try to lose weight. I just wasn't hungry. I just didn't need to eat because once your body has enough nutrients, it's not going to go send you out on a one-point hunt for food, which is what most of us live like, right? On a one-pointed hunt for food because our bodies aren't really looking for food. They're looking for nutrition. Our bodies are sending us out for nutrients. Once you get enough protein, you're not going to crave sugar, and that means bread and pasta and cereal, by the way. And once you get enough of fat, essential fatty acids, you won't crave fat. The fourth of, our, of, the, fourth of the macronutrients is a fiber. Grind your own, make your own fiber, get a Vitamix, make vegetable juice, vegetable soup, grind flax seeds, eat veggies, get fiber. You want about four tablespoons a day, uh, anywhere from two to four tablespoons a day. The, big, the bigger the stools, the smaller the hospitals. <laughs> I didn't make that up. That's a famous nutritional saying. I did not make that up. We're all adults here. You know, big, fluff, you want them big, shaped like your intestine, right? That's how you want them. And five, it's, one of the, it's one of the first things you'll notice once you start to get enough fiber. And then water. Water is extremely important for several reasons that we don't talk about. Number one, the chemistry in your body happens in a milieu of water. Water is a, a matrix for all the chemistry to have to happen in your body. Uh, water is also important for diluting blood sugar. For diabetics, or for pre-diabetics, and we're all pre-diabetic, water helps dilute blood sugar. If you're diabetic, first thing in the morning is amazing. Then you come to micronutrients, and this is where supplementation becomes so important because we have done such a number on our food, on our food chain, from the soil on upwards, that you cannot get what you need from the foods. And I wish you could. I wish you could. This is where Dr. Wallach, God love him, he was one of the first guys to notice it. How are we doing for time here, by the way? I want to take some questions. So, are, are, are we okay for time? What, what time you got? Anybody got to help me out? Oh, there's a clock up there. Okay, good. Okay, this is where Dr. Wallach, this is, was Dr. Wallach's genius is he knew that 
in his background as an animal person, as a vet working with animals, he knew that there were nutritional deficiency diseases that were occurring in animals that had analogs in people, that had analogs in people, that people had versions of. So that people had versions, uh, animals had versions of nerve diseases, animals had versions of, uh, of bone diseases that we have. And he knew in the animal world they gave him nutrients. What is it that the animals were getting that we're not getting in our food? Nutrients. We're not getting nutrients in our food because processing foods, uh, uh, unprocessed foods, are the enemy of the food chain. Businesses need food that lasts. Yeah, have you guys noticed that there's no sprouts around? That you can't get sprouts in Whole Foods anymore? Do you, anybody notice this? You can't get sprouts in Whole Foods? Nobody notice? You don't eat sprouts? Yep. Sprouts are amazing, amazing, but you can't get them anymore. They're not in restaurants, they're not in Whole Foods. You know why? They're hard to find. They're, you get them here? Maybe because they're fresh. In Colorado, we can't get them. Whole Foods stopped carrying them. Because sprouts are so loaded, they're so packed with nutritional value that everything likes them. Yeast like them, and bacteria like them, and funguses like them, and they don't last. They're perishable. Anytime a food is valuable, it's perishable. Any time a food is valuable, it's perishable, it dies. Because value is proportional or is, is directly proportional to energy. So anytime something is a high energy system that's a valuable nutritional food, it can die easily. It can break down easily and the best foods don't last. In the Bible, in the Bible they said, we'll get you the manna every day, don't worry about it. Now what the Jews didn't know that, they kept on, they had, what happened to it? What happened to the manna? It got bad, it got rotten, it got wormy. That's the lesson, is the good stuff is perishable. The good stuff has to be fresh. And, but we, don't have, we have a food chain, a food distribution system that is the antithesis of that. That, that can't, it, it can't make money on food that, doesn't, that dies. It can't store it, it can't ship it, it can't keep it on the shelves. So they depend on food that is dead which is why you don't want to participate in that kind of food. It's dead food. And I wish we could get everything we needed from the four food groups. I wish. I wish we lived in the Garden of Eden. I don't even like that I have to supplement, but you got to supplement if you're going to have access to these kinds of nutrients to the degree that you, did, that you need to. to the, in the density that you need to. In the nutritional density that you need to. And this is why supplementation is so important. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is like, it's not even a vitamin. It's like the difference between, between it's like orders of magnitude different from every other vitamin. Vitamin C and then all the other vitamins. It's like the god of vitamins. It's the Babe Ruth of vitamins. It shouldn't even be called a vitamin. Other animals make vitamin C. Vitamin C is a fundamental biochemical in the animal kingdom. Animals make it. Human beings, gorillas, and a kind of guinea pig are the only animals in the entire animal kingdom that doesn't make it. Vitamin C is hard to get in food. You, if you get an orange, you get 30 milligrams of vitamin C. The highest concentrations of vitamin C are chili peppers. They're like 300 milligrams. You'd have to eat like six chili peppers. Vitamin C is so not to get a day supply, not non-toxic. Vitamin C is so non-toxic, you can inject huge amounts right in your blood, directly in an injection. That's how non-toxic it is. But it's not in foods, which is why you have to make sure you're getting it in a supplemental fashion. Vitamin C is water-soluble, meaning it dissolves in water. Meaning, if you're using vitamin C, use your vitamin C in a liquid. Get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Get on the Tangy Tangerine. These are liquid vitamin C products. Get on liquid B vitamins, same deal. Your B vitamins are liquid vitamins. And like vitamin C, they're flushed out of your system throughout the day. So drink your Beyond Tangy Tangerine all day long. Sip on it all day long. Give your body a steady state in, uh, input. Like an IV drip of the B complex and vitamin C. This is the beauty of the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Ultimate Classic and these liquid nutrients. You can give yourself a steady state drip of nutrition throughout the day. This is why people lose weight on these things. This is why they're not as hungry on the, when you start taking the Beyond Tangy and the liquid nutrients. This is why you're not as hungry. It's not magic. You're just not as hungry because your body is getting the right nutrients. Ask people who've done it. And by the way, if you have any kind of diarrhea or loose stools when you use Beyond Tangy, you're not sipping on it long enough. You're trying to saturate your body with too much. That's why you want to sip on it. Give your body just the amount it needs. Don't overload the transport and absorption systems. 
The fat-soluble vitamins are a bit trickier because fats are harder for the body to absorb. One of the biggest problems we have as a culture is malabsorption of fats. When I said the body breaks down at the digestive system level, I wasn't talking as much about the water as I'm talking about the fats. You know there's 750,000 people lose their gallbladders every year. 750,000. Now, are you going to tell me that there's nearly a million people with messed up gallbladders? Are you going to tell me that they all needed their gallbladders taken out? Did you guys ever see... How many of you guys watched Bugs Bunny when you were kids? Bugs Bunny cartoons? You ever see the one where they're on the... Uh, it's Bugs Bunny. I think it's Bugs Bunny. He's on the sh he's uh, shipwrecked, or he's on a, a boat with a sailor, and and they're both shipwrecked in the middle of the in the middle of the ocean on this little rowboat. And the sailor keeps looking at Bugs Bunny. He's got like fork and knife, and he's seeing Bugs Bunny like, like he's a hamburger or something. Did you ever see that one? That's sometimes how I think surgeons are when you walk into their office. They're like they're like rubbing, and they're seeing you that way because that's the only way that I think that they can consci with consciousness yank out butcher people's organs. Not that we're not complicit. Not that we're not complicit. We have responsibility here. And the gallbladder is a primary area of distress because it's a fat absorption structure. And do not let anybody ever tell you you don't need a gallbladder. You need one very badly. There's nothing you don't need. There's no extras. There's no spares. They're all in there. They're all in there for a reason. And the gallbladder is a major fat absorption structure. It stores bile. And after blood and lymph, bile is the third most important fluid in your body and without a gallbladder you are seriously bile distressed which means you're not going to absorb your fats. Now you don't have to have a gallbladder problem, you can have a liver problem. And 80 million Americans have fatty liver, except they don't call it fatty liver now, they call it NAFLD. Anybody here NAFLD? NAFLD, this is the latest acronym disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, right? Non-alcoholic. Now why do they call it non-alcoholic? to distinguish it from the kind of fatty liver disease that you used to have to be drinking a pint of Jack Daniels every day to get. Today we're all getting it. Today it's our own personal cirrhosis of the liver, basically. And the whole point is, is that we are breaking down at the level of fat absorption, which means focusing on your body's ability to grow fats is critical. It's job number one. Fats tell the body from an evolutionary biology standpoint that you just killed an animal and it's summertime on the African savanna. That's when you have fats. You have fats when life is good. And this is, remember, we got to tell the body everything's okay. Fats tell the body everything is okay. And what you'll notice here when I talk about cholesterol, how the scheme about cholesterol being bad for you, I tell you, I tell you about the sun, the scheme about the sun being bad for you, the scheme about fats being bad for you, it's almost like there's a war on our humanity. Yes. You understand this? Everything that makes us grow, everything that makes us satisfied, everything that makes us relaxed, you don't want to go out in the sun. Yeah, you don't need any of that sun stuff. Cholesterol, bad. Don't stay away from cholesterol, right? Everything, fat, low fat. You don't want any fat, low fat. Are we healthier on low fat? Are we healthier on the, when we stay out of the sun? Are we healthier when we don't watch our cholesterol and want to No, no, and no. We're not. So clearly we have a problem with the, the model, and I'm not going to say it's a conspiracy, but it sure looks pretty nasty. Fat, it, <laughs> fat, I'm in good company. I could say it's, I don't, you know, I don't want to go out, I don't know. I don't, I don't even want to go there. The point is it's, that it's up to us. Fat tells the body you're satisfied. But we don't absorb fats as well as we can the same, for the same reason that when you're washing your dishes at home, What's, what's harder to get off of the dishes? Is it the oil and the grease, or is it the jelly and the water-soluble material? The, obviously, it's the oil and the grease. Oil and grease is sticky. It's hard to process. It's hard to digest. So when the body, when the digestive system breaks down, it breaks down most, especially at the level of fat absorption. Without fats, you don't grow. You don't repair. And I can always tell somebody who's not absorbing fats because they look shriveled. That's right, they look shriveled. They're starting to shrivel up because collagen and protein depend on fats for their growth because, as I said earlier, you cannot grow protein without fat, especially the fat-soluble vitamins, vitamins D, E, A, and K, which is why you've got to get on the Ultimate Daily, which is the E, D, A, and K, the fat-soluble vitamins. You need to focus on fat-soluble vitamins because, again, they're not in food, and if you combine fat malabsorption, you're going to become deficient in fat-soluble vitamins as well. The last and probably the most important uh, of our micronutrients is the minerals. The minerals. The minerals are the most fundamental of all and they're also the most fundamentally defective in terms of our intake because they're not in the ground. 
Everybody who says, oh, I just eat my vegetables, just eat your four food groups, the problems start with the earth. They're not in the ground, and you don't know what you're getting. And Doc Wallach is going to talk about this tonight. You don't know what you're getting when you eat your carrots and you eat your peppers and you eat the foods that are supposed to have the minerals, which is why you have to get on the mighty 90. It's not going to come. It's not going to come from the vegetables. Vegetables have phytonutrients in them. And by the way, the phytonutrients, you guys know what I mean when I say phytonutrients, plant nutrients that everybody loves so much, those are fatty. So if you have a liver problem or a gallbladder problem or a small intestine problem, you're not absorbing fats, you're not going to get those phytonutrients. You'll, the phytonutrients are one component, but the minerals, the minerals, the minerals, they're not in the soil, they're not in the plants, which is why you need to get on a mineral supplement. It's, it's, your Mighty 90 is your mineral supplement more than it's anything else. It's a mineral supplement and that's how you want to look at it and that was Dr. Wallach's genius. He noticed, he noticed that animals would lick the salt and they would get better. Basically, they would lick the salt and they would get better. And I didn't know this. I'm from New York. I was blown away. Salt licks. They got blocks of minerals sitting, sitting right in the, right in the uh, fields. Blocks of minerals. Colloidal minerals are your blocks of minerals. That's your, that, if you get nothing else, get the EFAs and get the uh, Ultimate Classic or the Tangy Tangerine. It's two products. It's two products. And if you don't feel better, if you don't feel better in a month, you call me up. And I, I'll tell you how to, I, I'll, first of all, I don't think it, uh, it's going to happen. But if you don't feel better, I'll come out and do, I'll, I'll do another talk just for you personally. <laughs> you can have your friends sit in the living room. If you don't get better, though, don't lie either, because I know you get better. <laughs> all right. All right. So, nutriate, respirate, move, and rest. It's your key to wellness. The triangle of disease is where the body breaks down. Whatever your disease process is, work backwards. Thyroid adrenal. How do you handle thyroid adrenal? Breathe, relax, salt, essential uh, uh, colloidal minerals, zinc, vitamin C, beyond tangy tangerine. Work on your blood sugar system. How do you handle your blood sugar system? I, there's a diabetic in this room I was talking to earlier. Was that you? The insulin. The easiest thing Doc says to people. He says, I'm going to reverse your diabetes. It's going to disappear. And they're oh, how can he say that? He can't say that. Yes, he can. I'm saying it. It's easy. Change your diet, add the, uh, the sweeties to your healthy star pack, your blood sugar will drop in less than a week. In less than a week, your blood sugar will drop. And it's not a miracle. You'll think it's a miracle. Your doctor will say it's a miracle. It's not a miracle. It's just the way the body works. You guys have been great. Thank you very much. I want to stay, I want to stay and take questions. I want to stay and take questions because I want, I want you guys, because I left time here intentionally, because I don't want to be the expert. I don't want to be the expert. I want you to be the expert. And I want to take a disease, and this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how, I'm going to show you how you take a disease that seems like it's completely separate from the triangle and it has nothing to do with cells, it has nothing to do with raisins, breads. It's my bones. It's my bones. I'm going to show you how it has to do with all of the things we talked about and how it has to do with nutritional supplementation. But I want you guys to hear, I want you to see how we work here so you can do this for your friends, you can do this for your family, you can do it for yourself and your kids and anybody else you know. Yes, ma'am. Um, I want to ask about, um, I, got, I was run over last month, November, and I got a concussion and a broken arm. And so they did a CT scan and it showed calcification of something in there. Okay, now here's... Pre-existing, pre-existing. Okay, so I don't want to talk about break, I don't want to talk about trauma, although we'll talk about the calcification here in a second. Yeah. One of the ways we die is we calcify. Your heart calcifies. Your brain calcifies. Your kidneys calcify. Your soft tissue calcifies. What does it mean to calcify? Turn to stone. Calcium begins to deposit. How metaphorical is that? Our hearts turn to stone, FYI. <laughs> right? That's how we die. Our hearts turn to stone. They calcify. So how does, how does this happen? Well, calcium is a very, 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 very complex mineral. It's involved in electrical energy, and it's involved in building energy. And it's, it's uh, flow from the blood into cells, and some cells into the blood, into the digestive tract into the cells, and digestive tract into the blood is tightly, tightly, tightly regulated. So when you calcify, when you calcify, something is going wrong with the chemistry of your body. It's not a calcium issue. It's a chemistry issue. So say, what's going wrong with the chemistry of your body? What chemicals are involved in calcium absorption? Well, the first chemical, the first chemical that goes awry is the most common and the, the, 
first chemical uh, place in the body you want to look at to heal the body, the first chemical entity in the body you want to look at, and that's insulin. Once insulin metabolism is thrown off, everything is thrown off. So the first place you want to work with calcification, with a thyroid problem, with anything else from a metabolic issue, and this is after the digestive process, and actually I shouldn't even say that, because where's calcium absorbed? In the gut. So you first thing you want to do is work with your gut, okay? And by the way, I'm not even going to say that anymore. First thing you work is the gut. You guys know this? First thing you work is the gut. Always first thing you work. But then the blood sugar issue. Work on the blood sugar for calcium. Let's go back to our triangle of disease. Once your insulin is thrown off, your ability to process minerals, your ability to utilize minerals at the cell level will be thrown off. Focus on insulin. Calcium, metabolic issues of all kinds, but calcium is very common. Focus on insulin. Lowering insulin. How do you lower insulin? How do you lower insulin? Stop eating sugar, but especially stop eating the disguised forms of sugar. Most people know enough about sugar. Pasta, rice, starch, potatoes, fruit juice, all of those places. Okay. Secondly, there's supplements that you could take to make sure that you're processing calcium correctly. Uh, vitamin K is probably one of the most important for processing calcium. Make sure you're on 100 micrograms of vitamin K. Get on the Ultimate Daily, which is a good source of vitamin K. Uh, green leafy vegetables, another good source of vitamin K. Anything you could do to keep calcium in the bones is going to be in your interest. Last thing for calcification of tissue, uh, calcium is a, one of the uh, calcium in the blood is one of the ways the body neutralizes acid. Acid is a toxin. When I said detoxify, I didn't tell you it was acid that the body's detoxifying. So when you have calcium leaving your bones, it's one of the ways the body is attempting to neutralize acid, which is a toxin. Help your body remove toxins. How do you help your body remove toxins? Deep breathing, exhaling. Um, uh, was that you talking about radiation? Was that you earlier? Make sure that you're using bentonite clay, zeolite clay, get on selenium. Oh, any kind of toxification. Radiation, some people were here were asking about radiation. Selenium is one of the most powerful chelating agents you'll ever use. Get on selenium. And by the way, I didn't tell you about selenium. We talked about algae. Get on selenium is a wonderful one. Absolute calcification can be reversed. Now, here's the thing about reversal. Okay, here's the thing about reversal, people, because this is important. Everyone's going to be like, well, he said reversal. Well, I'm going to reverse. I, I didn't reverse. Reversal takes time. It will begin to reverse this minute you make a decision, but the reversal process, depending on how far down the rabbit hole you are, is going to take some time. But you have to understand this, not because I'm telling you this, not because I'm saying this. Not because you heard me say this. You have to understand this at a gut level, at a visceral level. It's your body's healing nature. Your body is designed to heal. Do you understand this? It's not me just telling you. You have to buy into this uh, uh, philosophically. Philosophically, you have to say, okay, I'm a healing system. I'm not healing. Something's wrong. If you go into it saying, I'm not a healing system, not, then you don't have an option. Then you can have to be fit. You, then you have to be cut or you have to be drugged or you have to be somehow sustained for the last 20 or 30 years of your life. But if you say, if you understand, did I sell you on this idea that your body's a healing system? If you know that your body's a healing system, then it becomes, how do I access it? Okay, you see the difference? Yes, ma'am. Brandy. Uh, okay. Um, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure how, though. Healthy Star Pack. Healthy Star Pack. Healthy Star Pack. Healthy Star Pack. Thank you. Yes. You're, listen, nutritional supplementation is not an option. It's the cost of doing business for being a human. It's the cost of doing business for maximizing your human potential. If you think you can get it from food, good luck. It's not going to happen. Nutritional supplementation is the cost of doing business of being human. And there's no better nutritional supplement program than you're going to find in the Healthy Start Pack, which is the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, my personal favorite, the essential fatty acids, and the OsteoFX. And ask Andy about it. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, my name is Connie Reader, and my husband Don will be here tonight and he wasn't feeling well. And I'm glad he's not here. Okay. Immune system. What does the immune system mean? Absorption. No, it doesn't mean absorption. What? Say it louder. Anytime you have allergies, anytime you have uh, leakages, anytime something is expanding in the body, what you're dealing with is a stressed out immune system, and your immune system is your defense system. If you have a defensive reaction, what is that telling you? 
Something is getting into the body. Anytime something is getting into the body, this is true about autoimmune disease, and this is true about any kind of immune, immune health issue. Anytime something's getting into the body, there's only three places. The body's a closed system. There's only three places something gets into the body. Through the skin, rarely. You have to have a very serious burn or something, or cut. Through the nose, occasionally. 80% of your immune system, your defense system, is located in this third point of entry, which is the mouth. Always focus on the mouth. And then focus on patching up the gut. Get on the Z, have him, is he on the Z radical? Z radical, glucogel, digestive enzyme. Do you guys know about this product called Z radical? Holy moly. Seaweed, seaweed and uh, algaes contain these powerful sugar materials that are unbelievable for the immune system. They're called polysaccharides. You probably have heard the term complex sugars, polysaccharides. The Z radical, polysaccharide dense dense polysaccharides for the, any kind of immune issue, including, including cancer. Look up fuco, fucoidin and cancer. Okay, I'm not even going to tell you anything about it. Just look up fucoidin and cancer. The Z-radical is a fucoidin product. Fucoidin is a complex sugar that's fi found in algae for the digestive tract, for the immune system, uh, and then also the digestive enzymes with meals. Is he doing the digestive enzymes? You better tell me he is. He doesn't listen to me. Have him call me, Connie. Yes. Connie, have him call me. Apple cider vinegar with your enzymes. Oh, ultimate enzymes? I love multifunctional ingredients. I love ingredients that are that, uh, supplements where you get multifunction, where you get uh, multiple benefits. Digestive enzymes are thin the blood. They're uh, anti-inflammatory. They're great for dental pain, for arthritis pain. They're wonderful post-surgery and pre-surgery, and they help you digest your food. Everybody should be on the ultimate enzymes. Everybody, whether you have a digestive problem or not, use something acid with them, like apple cider vinegar, to activate the digestive enzymes. Focus that way. Thank you, Connie. Yes, you see how it goes back to the triangle? It's always going to go back to a cell. If I go long, uh, far enough, it'll go back to a cell, but it'll always go back to a triangle. To the triangle. Yes, ma'am. Yes, right here. Yes. Um, I just don't know where to start, but okay. you never touch on the subject of parasites. You mentioned I bacteria. never talk about parasites. You mentioned bacteria, but is, is the parasites no. the same as bacteria? Good question. Now, bacteria, well, uh, Good question. Uh, uh, parasites wreak havoc on our bodies. Every one of us have them. Parasites. Pets, pets have them. Doctors. Listen, this is good. Uh, this well, is good. This is good. Do you guys hear this? Yeah. Uh, this is why, I, and this, I'll tell you why I don't talk about parasites. Uh -huh. Okay? And obviously, parasites are a real problem. People have seen parasites. Some, I have a friend who does colonic therapy, and she tells me, you won't believe what comes out of your colon, including parasites. <laughs> Sites. So yeah, obviously it's a problem. But what we're talking about here is a very interesting uh, uh, polarity between the focal point, which is what, how medicine focuses, and the terrain that the bacteria and the parasites and the cancer and the disease live in. And this is a famous battle between scientists. And it started with a guy named Louis Pasteur. Anybody ever heard of Louis Pasteur? Louis Pasteur is the father of germ theory. He's the guy who figured out, that's where we get pasteurization from, exactly. He's the guy who figured out that germs and parasites and things cause diseases, right? Well, he had a battle with a guy named uh, Bouchamp. I think his name was Bouchamp. Was it Bouchamp? I think it was Bouchamp. Okay, I think it's his name. I think his name was Bouchamp. But uh, anyway, so another guy, and the other guy said, no, it's the terrain. It's where the bacteria are living. Well, Louis Pasteur won because they came up with antibiotics and it, it became a, a way to sell product. But on his deathbed, Louis Pasteur said, Famously, he said, it is the terrain. I was wrong the whole time. It is the terrain. And this is how I look at health and wellness. I want to see what is the terrain that the cancer is living in? What is the terrain that the parasite is living in? What is the terrain that the germ is living in? Because we're coming at this, and I'm coming at this anyway, and I hope you are as well after listening to me, from the perspective that the body is whole, it's holy, it's healthy, it doesn't need any fixing. It needs to have the terrain such that the parasites don't live, that the bacteria cannot thrive, and the diseases will go away or cannot, cannot continue. We need to focus on the environment. And everything I said about today, you're right, I didn't talk about parasites and I never do. And I never really even talk about cancer. I'm talking about the terrain, the place where the disease is showing up in. And once we change that, once we change the terrain, if you agree with me, I hope you do, I hope I convinced you that this is philosophically that the body is a healing system and if you don't go cut yourself and watch, if you're not convinced, just observe for yourself. If, you don't, if you've heard me for the last two hours, hopefully you buy into this that the body's whole and healthy and then you don't have to worry about parasites. You have to set the terrain such that the parasites don't live. We make our own anti-cancer medicine, people. 
We make our own antiviral medicine, our own antibiotics, our own antiparasites, our own sunscreens. We make them all. All right, we don't need any help. We make them, that, and that's why I never talk about parasites or any of the Dr. Wallach said that if you, when you supplement, yes. you're supplementing the parasites and they're healthy too. So to a certain extent, the supplement, the parasites are going to live, but if you're also supplementing your body's defense mechanisms and they can take care of the parasites, obviously. We live in a, look, it's a jungle out there, girl. Have you noticed? <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. I didn't make it up. There's parasites out there. Yes. yes. The parasites eat away at us, true? And then they also uh, do number two, okay? Yeah. So those, that number two would cause cancer tumors in our... In the terrain. Get the terrain such. You think you're condemned to parasites, it sounds like. Well, You're not, no, the terrain, the environment of where the parasites are living. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, good. I think I just got you to think about that. Okay, good. Yes. In the beginning, you talked about uh, cholesterol and how much we need Cholesterol, it. yes. Ever, love that subject. Is there ever a time when cholesterol could be too high? It's cholesterol, here's the thing on cholesterol, okay? Cholesterol is very unstable. You got to go. Nice to see you. Oh, oh, bye. <laughs> no more mic? Oh, I got this one. I'll be back at 7. Okay. Okay, so, uh, okay, cholesterol. Cholesterol is a raw material for making many, many, many building compounds. Numerous, 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 numerous building compounds. 